Good morning. Wanted to just do a quick video on the process of nurturing a uh, tropical tree back to health and hopefully it uh, thriving in the Central Valley. So here we've got a strawberry, uh, starfruit tree, a, uh, a carry starfruit. Um, this tree actually came from a friend of ours. Uh, it was planted in the ground back in February, I'm sorry, March of 2019. And ironically, the same tree, well, an, an identical tree that we have, we also got it at the same time she, uh, she did. And uh, this is the tree that we have, planted in March of 2019. It is five times the size of this and it's loaded with flowers, it is fruiting. I mean, just look at the, the size of the, the trunk itself. I mean, it is like night and day compared to this uh, sad looking guy here. So, the, and you know, when, when I had stopped by her house to take a look at the tree, which was planted in the ground, I mean, I, it was almost immediate to me on, on what the issues were. So, and, and that uh, I wanted to discuss. Looking at the, the tree that was in the ground, this was in her uh, yard, uh, in the ground, it was obvious to me that the tree was just basically starving. Um, well, starving for food and also water. Um, and that's usually a combination of not being fertilized, not enough watering, and more importantly, the soil. So from what I'm told, when this was put it in the ground, the soil was not amended. It was just straight up dig a hole, put the uh, plant in, fill it back up with the native dirt, and it really just never took off. So this morning, they, um, she uh, dug it up for us. We're going to heal it back. Uh, we're going to nurse it back to health. So... Going back to soil amendments, the reason why we do that in Central Valley, um, so unlike Florida or some other places where they've got, you know, mostly sandy loam soil, in Central Valley, we, we, we get clay. We, we've got clay soil, which usually means it's very high in alkaline. We're talking the soil pH in the Central Valley, generally, if you don't amend it, is towards the high 7s to the 8s. Store fruits specifically prefer to live in a soil environment that is between 5.5 and 6.5. So although the numbers don't seem like they mean much between 6.5 and 8, so the, the scale that they use for soil pH, I'm, I'm blinking out on what the name is called, but basically 0.1 is two times, is uh, it, it, it's 100 percent times is, is one time worse than the other number. For example, 6.5 and 6.6. 6.6 is twice as alkaline as 6.5. So imagine between 6.5 to 8, and she had this in a, a soil level of 8. So it, it basically wasn't fed, uh, not enough water, and even in the case that it was fed, the roots likely were not able to absorb the nutrients due to the high uh, alkalineness of the soil. So, and also, one thing about na the native soil too is the, the drainage factor. It, or soil just doesn't drain well, so that's why you've got to amend it. Um, to give you an example, so this is, this is native soil. Uh, this is actually good native soil. This came from my raised bed back in the yard. Uh, so, and this is how we normally want it when you put a, a tree in a container. You want it to make it as compact as possible so that way there's very little air pockets. So native soil, and this is, um, you know, potting soil. It's basically a, a, grow, a growing medium. Um, but I wanted to t t show you what I mean by drainage. Let me turn on the water.
All right. So most tropical trees, there are some exceptions. Most tropical trees do not like their quote, quote, feet to be wet. In that the water needs to be needs to drain away from the roots. So here it is. Let's see which one's gonna drain. I mean I'm I'm already seeing some drainage on the bottom, see that? This is what you want, especially on a container. Otherwise, what happens is most trees, when I say they don't want the feet wet, let me turn off the water. So the roots need oxygen. The top piece of it produces oxygen and, and it absorbs carbon dioxide as we all learn in school. But the roots need oxygen. Just going back to the drainage really quick. I mean, this is what you want. You want it to drain away from the roots and not, not stay in like this. I mean, with this soil, this is native uh, clay soil, what happens is the, the most trees can hold their breath for about two days or so. Unlike you and I, where, you know, after a couple of minutes, we probably passed out. But trees, they don't need a whole lot of oxygen. They still need oxygen. So most trees can live in, quote, quote, puddle water for about two days. And after that, uh, there's some consequences. So, and with, so with store foods in general, they, they don't like the feet to be wet. So drainage is critical. So this is what you want. So we're going to go ahead and um, put this uh, tree that had been dug up from her yard, we're going to put this on a, a, uh, in a 25-gallon container um, using this just a, ge a generic uh, potting soil. It, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. But most potting soils in general the soil pH is generally about 7 or so, which is neutral. So with that being the case, I'm going to apply some elemental sulfur to it to uh, bring down the soil pH just a bit. With elemental sulfur, it's not going to be immediate. It's not going to lower the soil pH immediately. Uh, how it works is it, it actually reacts with the bacteria that's in the soil and slowly lowers the soil pH, which ultimately is kind of what you want. Um, just because if the soil pH is changed too quick, the trees are gonna stress out. So I've not seen this yet, but uh, let's see how it is. If there's some native dirt in there, I'm going to try my best to uh, take it all out. I mean, this, the, the soil is still the container soil. I mean, you see a lot of sand particles in here. Uh, likely these came from Florida. Uh, so drainage, I mean, sand provides a lot of good drainage. Now, normally I would add sand to my mixture, but this is a temporary solution. Um, I just need this guy to be able to make it to winter and then come spring, you know, I will put it into, it, into more of a permanent uh, home. Yeah, there's not a whole lot left, but you know, this is a good sized tree and um, I have a good feeling that uh, it, it should do nicely. So I'm just gonna fill back up using mostly um, potting soil mixture. Good. And 
check it out. I mean, see all this uh, webby substances that's solidifying all the soil. This is mycorrhiza fungi. So I'm gonna break this up and bring it slightly above grade. I, I normally like it about maybe two inches from the top. That way, um, when I water, it creates a little berm on the top. And make it as compact as you can because again, the, the whole goal is you don't want any or to minimize uh, air pockets. What happens is when the root encounters an air pocket, that root actually kind of dries out. So the whole idea is just to make it as compact as possible. That should do it. So now, one other thing for me to do, like I said, the soil pH is likely about seven, maybe seven and a half. We're gonna incorporate some elemental sulfur to it. And what I normally do, especially for containers, is I generally dress on the top, just like I would uh, fertilize it using a uh, granular feeding. Just uh, break it in. Probably could use some more. And when I water it, it slowly reacts with the, well, the bacteria breaks it down and creates uh, or acidifies the soil. And one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to feed it. I'm not going to feed the tree uh, just because it's, uh, it's gone through enough stress. So it's really in no position to... Uh, uh, absorb any nutrients. Last thing we're gonna do, well, one of the last things we're gonna do is it's it's a tree. I mean, it, it's able to support itself, so there's really no need to have these supporting structures here. It's just uh, it's just gonna be in the way. I mean, look at that. That's how it should be in a container. And uh, really, one of the last things for us to do is just to kind of give it a nice drink of water. And then uh, we'll see how the, how the tree drains. So once you put a tree either in a container or in the ground, generally it takes the tree about two weeks to go through a transplant shock. So within those two weeks, I'm not going to feed this tree at all. I'm just going to just give it water, but I'm not going to fertilize it. And then beyond two weeks, um, that's when I will start fertilizing it. So I'm going to water it. Yeah, I mean, check out the native soil. <laughs> it's still sitting there. Whereas the soil with good drainage, I mean, it's mostly gone. So th that's the that's whole idea behind drainage is basically the tree just can't breathe. They cannot uptake oxygen. And then the bacteria becomes anaerobic and uh, starts killing the tree slowly. While I'm watering, one of the last things that I, I'm going to do is determine what branch is dead and which ones are not. The ones that are dead, uh, you know, you want to prune them. The ones that are living, obviously, leave them there. And one of the, oh, I didn't even see this. One of the uh, determining factors on uh, a, a branch being uh, either alive or dead is 
depending on its flexibility. If it's flexible, it's likely okay. If it's brittle like this, it needs to be taken out. Yeah, see how living ones are flexible? And then the dead ones are, they're not. They're, they're brittle, you can break them easily. So I need to determine which ones are good and which ones are bad and then just uh, prune them out. So yeah, we are gonna put this tree in the heated greenhouse for the duration of winter. And then likely come uh, March, uh, when the water, weather warms up, uh, we are going to uh, find a permanent place for it. I mean, check out the, the drainage. I mean, I'm still watering, but it, it's, it's draining. So ideally, this is what you want. So in the next two weeks, I'm going to start off with giving it some granular feeding uh, and then uh, giving it uh, some liquid feeding just to kind of nurse it back to health. And being that it's going to be in the uh, heated greenhouse, nighttime temperature, it doesn't drop below 50. Uh, daytime temperature, it is usually in the 70s to 80s uh, with some indirect sunlight. So I think this guy should be pretty good. Uh, it should make a nice full recovery. So, in conclusion, when planting a tree, again, make sure these, your soil is, it, it's going to be its permanent home, so make sure you give it a good permanent home. Uh, that includes uh, good drainage, uh, understand your pH, understand the pH requirements of your trees. I mean, the store food uh, between 5.5 and, and 6.5, that's actually a bit more forgiving. Uh, when you look at something like the a blueberry, which if you follow me, I'll show you. I've got several in the yard. Um, when I planted this two years ago, this was expected. But blueberries, they are one of the most sensitive when it comes to soil pH requirement. These guys, blueberries, it, it likes the soil to be in the threes and the fours. So for the first year or two, it's going to look like crap. It's going to look like this. It, it basically starves until it eventually cross fingers, it eventually uh, acclimates to the, uh, the, the dirt that we've got. And what the reason why it's, it's bare like this too is it is winter, so it's, it's gonna go deciduous and lose all of its leaves. But generally, come spring, these guys bounce right back up. But yeah, soil pH is critical when it comes to um, tropicals, well, any plant in general. But that's it. All right. Have a good afternoon.